So because of the different compartments we have, the organization of our body, um, we have the ability to have differences in either different places within our body or inside versus outside. Um, these differences are called gradients. So a gradient is either a, a difference in one place in something versus another place. Um, so like a temperature gradient, pressure gradient, we'll talk about the ones that are relevant. Um, a gradient also can refer to a slope. And these two ideas, those two definitions, either like a difference and a slope, really can be combined and that can be helpful. This is clearly a hill. I'm gonna label it hill in case you don't know that. There's a downhill side and an uphill side. You've heard of like the gradient of a hill. Um, so let's use that as an example and use the terminology for um, gradients is pretty intuitive. So when we're going downhill, let's pretend it's winter. It says someone's sledding. It might look a little bit like someone's sledding. Here is someone sledding down the hill. They are, this is a downhill gradient, a downhill slope. Right, it's um, there's a force driving them down this hill, down this gradient, and it's spontaneous, meaning no energy is required. No energy to go down the hill. When they went up the hill in the first place to get up the hill, there is work required energy. So this uphill gradient. does require ATP. In this case, literally like muscles contracting to go up the hill, right? Um, and our body is gonna be ATP too though. So this way, the downhill gradient, this way is an uphill gradient. Those same term, that same terminology is gonna be used to talk about gradients in our body. Uphill meaning requires ATP, downhill meaning <clears throat> it's spontaneous. So what types of gradients um, are we going to see in our body? Um, there's, a, there's a couple. The last two are going to be the biggest. I'm going to start with the one that's most intuitive. So a pressure gradient. So pressure is right a force. Um, pressure gradients can exist in either air, that's what actually causes wind and weather patterns, or fluids. And fluids is going to be the most important in our body. Um, in our body, it's going to be blood. Fluid pressure is what causes, you know, like you can think of water movement, like turning a hose on, turning a tap on, that water flows because of a, a pressure difference. Um, in the body, and sometimes in other, other examples as well, you have a pump that creates pressure. The heart is a pump that's causing high pressure creation. The fluid, therefore, can flow to low pressure areas, which is the rest of the body. The gradient just refers to the pressure difference. That pressure difference is important for our function. The next type of gradient I want to tell you about is temperature. There's many different scenarios in which temperature gradients might be relevant for different fields um, where heat loss in the environment or whatever is um, important. I'm going to show here a person. A person who is about 98 degrees, as most people are. Um, if we do fluctuate, it's not a whole lot around that temperature. And let's say they're in, if it's fall, um, 60 degrees outside. That's a temperature gradient. There's going to be heat loss due to that difference. That heat loss is, is um, due to the gradient. And our bodies are able to deal with that because of homeostatic processes that maintain body temperature and it's just fine. But it's a temperature gradient. Heat flow, heat flows down that gradient without energy, any energy required directly. Obviously, it requires energy to heat your bodies in response to that loss. And literally, the production of ATP produces heat as a byproduct. Okay, the last two are going to be the most important. I'm going to do a different color. I'll still do the 
to draw the same color, uh, the most important for this semester and probably next semester also. Chemical radiance and electrical radiance. A chemical radiant is just the difference in, a, in the concentration of a chemical. This chemical could be sugar, water. Um, examples from your, your life, let's say that you've got a, a glass of water and you put some like food dye in it. Um, that's a gradient, concentration gradient. And what's going to happen over time is that concentration gradient will decrease as that dye spreads down its gradient. Um, but a gradient exists at the beginning. Or you could think about an example where you spray perfume somewhere and eventually that smell diffuses. Um, there wasn't initially a very strong gradient. It's actually the odorant is a chemical that then disappears over time. Um, so that's the concentration gradient. We are going to have, pretend this is a bunch of cells here, concentration gradients across the inside of our cells and the outside of our cells. These are some cells, and you know the terms for inside and outside the cells, ECF and ICF. There might be a higher concentration of, say, glucose, sugar, outside the cell and lower inside the cell. It could be a gradient. And therefore, there's a drive for that glucose to move into the cell. Um, there are other factors that are going to matter in terms of whether it can get in, but there is a force, a drive, spontaneously for it to move in without energy input, if it's higher here than it is there. If it's lower inside the cell than outside the cell, there's going to be a drive for it to move out. I'm just going to add that word here, drive. Lastly, we've got electrical. The example you've seen of this in your everyday life the most is, what do you think this lovely thing is here? A battery. So um, separation of charge, a charge difference. And batteries are designed to store charges, charged ions across um, that area there. Our cells do the same thing. So inside the cell, it's more negative compared to outside the cell, which is more positive. Let's go into much more detail of what this means, like literally what is making it positive. It's ions. Um, so for example, one of the positive ions is Na plus sodium. Um, but the point here is that this gradient exists. It's an electrical gradient. Um, it's going to be measured in millivolts in our case. Now, maintaining, establishing in the first place, reestablishing these gradients takes work. That, we'll talk a lot about that, um, especially that electrical gradient across the cell. Um, and you'll see why, why they're important, so how they're used as well, so the use of those gradients once they're maintained. Um, but that, if you can get the idea of what this means to be uphill versus downhill, when something would be, have this drive to be able to move, move passively, Right? In other words, the spontaneous, to use this sooner, is passive. When something can move passively without more energy input versus when does it require ATP? When it, is it active? Does it require some energy input directly? If you can get that, it'll really help. And we'll, we'll see it. Um, we'll see it a lot.